Hello. Hi. Welcome to episode... 14. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's 14, Because yeah. last week was the... 12A, because we weren't going to do like a 13. Yeah, and I'm wearing new glasses, so that's why you're probably yeah. confused. <laughs> and I got matching ones. Not that we're ever going to wear them at the same time. Never, oh. ever going to wear them at the same time. But, we're also wearing yeah. matching t-shirts. But Which mine, we always do. Oh yeah, you've got the retro, school. retro logo school, yeah, the original before one. Trish redesigned it for us, yeah. refreshed it. Yeah. So welcome to episode 14. Yeah. Um, we've got a great guest today. Oh, uh, um, and we are the Royal Bee Yarn Company. <laughs> we're uh, um, a shop uh, in yeah. Pacifica, California. Yeah. We sell yarn and things. Yep. and. Um, here's some of our yarn, yarn which we do every episode. Now. I know, we do it every episode. But I, I, I picked out one of the, um, uh, are you, are Variegated. you, you're so hot, aren't you? I, <laughs> it, we're having a little, a little heat. <laughs> yeah, oh, you are. right, okay, yeah, yeah. physically yeah. hot. <laughs> it's really hot. It's, um, it's you are also 90 hot, degrees. It's, yeah. we had a mini kind of heat wave over the yeah. weekend. It's really Thunder hot Thunderstorms last night, so the bag's under the eyes because we didn't get much sleep. Oh my no. God, the storm was scary. They were it's um, a dry storm. Yeah, and I think it started something like 18 fires yeah, in the different. Santa Cruz and San Mateo or Santa, yeah. I don't know. anyway, our area. So firefighters have been tackling that. Scary weather. And so I'm a little damp. Yeah, I can, I can like, Go you're <laughs> radiating heat. I will cleanse my hands before I go out the <laughs> We're still in pandemic. 150... Yeah one days of pandemic yeah yeah but anyway this is our variegated yarn which i don't have up online if you're ever interested in the variegated yarn get in touch you should do the the squishing and the reason hand. why i don't have it up online is because it's very difficult to yeah. photograph and as it is 18 That's micron not what it looks like, yeah. merino wool um farmed here in the u.s uh, eco-friendly farm and then milled near the farm in hand dyed in all natural dyes. This one runs a little bit because it's got a lot of indigo in it. Yeah, indigo is a, a very difficult dye to keep it is. from running initially. Yeah, initially and then it so. kind of settles down. But um, yeah, so email me or um, call me yeah. and uh, if you're ever interested in looking at it. Oh, what, what I was going to say is that like all my yarn, because it's hand dyed and because it's natural dyed and non superwash is, um, I call them sisters, not twins. So if you really care about consistency, then you can alternate strands. I happen to enjoy the slight tonality of um, the various different hanks, and I think it looks beautiful. And I think most people who like a hand-dyed tonal yarn probably agree with me, but yeah. Oh, and um, that one is called Nancy's Victorian Garden Party. Tea Party. Tea Party. We and named these in Cuba. We did, yeah. And still open. Which we can't go to anymore, but. Oh, there we go. That's another another thing. And then this is Glamour Jane is pretty in pink frosting. Probably seen Glamour Jane modeling some of my inspiration pieces. Sorry, just about logo stuff. Aww. Cool. Trish designed that for me. Mm -hmm. And then we have our new line of yarn, which is uh, uh, woolen spun. And um, this is kind of like a new green color. I cannot take credit for coming up with that green. I had 40 extra, um, no, I'm sorry, 20 extra hanks of undyed wool. And I, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, could you come up with a teal for me? Because I had come up with the formulas for all the other colors. This is another one. This is nice Just to one. show another color. And I've only had this for a really short period of time. Um, and my next, I'm, I'm kind of running out of several of the colors. My next batch is supposed to be shipping on the 21st of August. So not too long. And then my um, Purple Couch collection, which is the worsted spun yarn, really, really super soft. Actually, there have been quite a few delays. The mill has been kind of overwhelmed with work and some bigger projects to my own. So I've taken a little bit of a back seat, which is absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. And COVID and all the, you know, it's really just um, 
the husband and wife team now um, doing everything. So I'm hoping by the end of August, I've kind of been saying four weeks for like eight weeks. So, um, but it is taking a little bit of time, but that's okay. Hmm. I still have a little bit of it left. And then I have plenty of other amazing yarns in the shop to choose As you from. said last week in your shop, your, sh your, sh your tour. Oh yeah, yeah. We did our little tour, mm -hmm. our anniversary tour. Yeah. So anyway, what have you been up to? Well, I've been getting ready for school, being a work in education in Pacifica. Um, school's getting ready to open up on Thursday. And that means the kids are coming back, back to school, but it's actually they're working distance learning to I want to start see with. if you're good. Are you going to do air quotes one more time? Yes. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so that's it's Sunday today. We always film the show on Sunday. Um, and we're anticipating tomorrow will be extremely busy. So I better sleep tonight. I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah. I stayed up till like 3.30 when it finally started raining. I was like, oh, okay, I'm less frightened of the fires. Little did I know that, like, mm. it wasn't much were, rain. They started, I think the rain uh, just landed yeah, and it evaporated yeah. straight away. Kind of scary. But anyway, that's what I've been doing this week. And this weekend, I've been just trying to relax, read, um, empty the dishwasher. He made an amazing meal last night. Tony is such a good did cook. Did I? Yeah. No, you made if the he... amazing meal last night. Oh, wait, you no, made you did Bubble and Squeak. That was Saturday night. Oh, that was Friday that night. Bubble and Squeak. Yeah, I made Bubble and Squeak, which is a great British dish. Yeah, tell them what Bubble and Squeak is. <laughs> <laughs> people Basically, know it's, uh, you know, we like to have a, a traditional Sunday roast. Except uh, for we're vegetarians, in, so we don't, so we don't actually have, have meat. meat so. Unless we meet cheat, which we don't do very often. Although we did have a couple of months of like major, we are like, COVID started sausages like we just completely went for it but yeah yeah we've calmed that down and gone back to our vegetarian way anyway when you make a sunday <laughs> roast all the vegetables you leave behind you put them in the fridge for the night and then what you do is you just like kind of mush them all up together and then get a hot frying pan I, you can put um lard in it if you want to um, or goose fat. I don't know if anybody really... does that here i don't think we have yeah of course you, you, really? you can buy lard yeah really but i use olive oil yeah olive oil um, you get it really hot and you f kind of fry it and stir it and you make sure it gets all crispy and it's 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 uh, so when you're cooking good. it it kind of makes this funny sound like a bubbling squeak sound so that's why it's called bubbling squeak. Oh, I didn't know that. And um, why I else, why else do you think it was called bubbling squeak? I have no squeak? idea. It's because of the sound it makes <laughs> when you cook it. I'd never actually thought about it. To be and honest. so um, <laughs> my mum used to make it when when we were growing up and um, usually on a Monday, the day after Sunday. <laughs> in Britain and um, so we had that and here <laughs> and uh, we, we had that for dinner with some other things it's nice it's so good it, I highly recommend it if you're ever doing like Tony will do but lots of salt and pepper in it yeah uh, Tony I put will... Lowry salt which is yeah, a nice really I love Lowry salt yeah I would eat that meat <laughs> Tony does avocado like... toast is good if you want to yeah. be a hipster and eat avocado <laughs> toast a bit of Lowry salt you have avocado toast almost every single morning. I do. <laughs> eat really a lot of avocados. avocado toast. Well, we live in California. It makes sense, right? It's local produce. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, what have you been doing, Kelly? Oh, I wanted to, to give like a little bit more detail about the bubble and squeak. So it's like <laughs> peas, carrots, it's whatever broccoli, vegetable you're... cauliflower, it's you, yeah. Brussels sprouts, cabbage, and potatoes, you, It's always cabbage. good with sprouts and cabbage. And it's all of that combined in these nice. mashed up like um, mashed yeah. potato. It's so good. It's, it's so good. good. It's like a, it's a bit like um, lat latkes. Like potato pancakes, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, yeah, it's that except kind of thing. a whole bunch of except other... Except a whole lot of other stuff. So I put some herbs and spices. Yeah, and, and no onion usually. I bet it'd be great with some onion in it. It probably would be great with onion, yeah. but yeah, not traditional. No. So, anyway, yeah. what have you been doing, Kelly? I've been doing quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, we've got the shop open and we busy, have busy. shoppers. It really isn't busy. I really wish it was busy, but it isn't. I mean, it's a trickle of people, which actually open. is appropriate because it really helps in yeah. terms of people being able to come in and relax because we only have like onesies, twosies kind of in at a time. Mm. One day we had four people in at the same time and it was like, whoa! Yeah. Um, but um, theoretically, I could have 10 people in here and it would still be safe. But honestly, about five feels like you can yeah. still have a really good shop and relax and not feel like you're having to 
walk around people and stuff. And, and they're still building. Construction's still going on. We still have a weird glow. And I just want to apologize for the fan sound in the background. Oh, I think yeah. It's so hot. As with, we need to go clip on mics. We do. We do. Yeah. We need a bit more we're professional. Gonna... And a proper light. We're using just the really? chandeliers. Yeah. We're really like, gonna... a, like a bright light. You think we're going to, are we going to like up our, if yeah. we and get up, clip on mics. If we up our production values, then yeah. we're going to have to up our content. No, we I, don't. We can't be like all for coat and no knickers. No, it'll just be, it will look good. <laughs> I think if Just we're... to get the sound, because oh. when I get closer, it probably gets annoyingly loud. I know. A couple of times <laughs> when I'm watching this back, I'm like, why am I shouting? Stop oh. shouting. Oh. Anyway, what else? Yeah, so um, we've been doing a bunch of um, stuff with the Bay Area Fiber Fair, so that's been really fun. A lot of people have been participating, giving mm -hmm. lots of stickers Giving the stickers out, out yeah. Waiting for, we're going to get these um, like really cool pins um, shortly, so those will be available soon. we got some interesting designers coming in and stuff. Yeah, and we've had a... People discovering us for the first time this yeah, week. Yeah, that was fun. Local people discovering us for the first time, and they're so shocked. That we, exist. that we exist yeah it takes time it takes time we've only been here for here, um, three years just off so. the one you can see the ocean <laughs> wow you got your salesman hat on today did you have coffee just before you came i haven't in? had coffee oh, today really? i'm not wow. coffee. oh except for this morning oh yeah i yeah. i've been working out there so what? it's probably my endorphins are kicking in <laughs> anyway Oh, yeah, so whatever. I'm trying to think of what else has been going on. So the Bay Area, oh, I've been doing a bunch of preparation for Lambtown, which I'm so excited about. So sadly, it isn't going to be physical, but the organizers of Lambtown are working really hard to create a magical kind of online experience. Mm. And uh, as a vendor, I was putting together a brochure and some photographs, and we'll be doing a discount during the Lambtown um, event. So keep your eyes and ears peeled, peeled, um, ready. What am I trying to peeled. say? Peeled. <laughs> ready for that. Because uh, it should be a really, really, really charming event, and I think they're working very hard to. So hot. Sorry. It's just so hot. <laughs> we got a great guest today, though. We have such a great guest, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about her yarn before we go to her interview. Oh, there and it then is. When we're, there. When, then when we're finished, I'm going to showcase um, the Nerd Bird Makery stuff that I recently got into the shop, which is just adorable. So, okay. But let me preface the interview by saying that Ava is um, local born and raised in San Francisco, and she is the dyer behind Seismic Yarns and Dye Works. And she is our people, right? Yeah, she's she's cool. our kind of people. She's, she's adorable. Very she's nice lady. into kind of a lot of the geeky stuff that we're into. Very, very nice mm. and so talented. And part of her talent is the fact that um, she almost takes like a scientific approach to her dye process using syringes and all the good stuff. And so her color consistency is pretty awesome. And I have two of her bases in the shop right now, fairly new into the shop. Seismic butter in the fingering weight. Is and that butter? It, that's the base. Oh. It's not the color name, it's actually yes. the base. I, and see, it's I know smooth. nothing about dyeing <laughs> and, um, and then the um, seismic butter in the DK, so I have fingering and DK and a few of the colors. Honestly, it's kind of sold really quickly, so I actually need to um, place a new order, but I absolutely love it. Um, this color is called Dark Tanzanite, just showcasing a few of those colors. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I'm sorry, I keep taking your job. Let me, let me, well, I'm, I'm gonna uh, turn that over so that you get see. the pretty side. This is one she talks about in the interview, which is called Thunderstone. 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 Yeah, like Thunderstone. Mad Max Beyond Thunderstone. This one is Midnight Storm. Midnight Storm. I think this is my favorite. And I'm not a real purple person. Well, I mean, apart from the purple couches. You love prints. The fact that I named my um, first yarn collection the Purple Couch Collection. Roasted Ube. <laughs> purple and gold are the colors of my um, shop. <laughs> I don't know, but anyway, but typically I don't gravitate toward like purple that yarn. That one looks Is like, that your um, favorite? This one looks kind of like tie-dye or candy Isn't that, it beautiful? Candy oh, yeah. This one is called 
better days are com coming, right? Better days are coming. And that Which is, is what of, we all need. Right? And it's so happy. And it's such a happy colorway. And um, it's part of her kind of COVID collection. So uh, mm. kind of like my Pacifica Coast Side Woolen Spring Yeah, yarn just a celebration sort of, came of, out of life. And yeah, celebrating of our town and all that good stuff. Yeah, this is so. a good interview. I enjoyed it. I, I think we're going to enjoy it now. I mean, yeah. Oh, this is going to be a great interview. Here she is. <gasps> Hi, Ava. Hi. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi, Ava. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Look at your background. <laughs> um, <laughs> in my husband's area of the house. So this is his game room slash the kids' playroom. So it's uh, it's decorated like a man cave. Plus kids. <laughs> um, I used to be um, the publisher of Nintendo Power in my past life. So free games. <laughs> right. I remember that like totally. That gave you instant cred when we met. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for um, being on our teeny tiny little show and um we should disclose that we've known each other for several years and that um ava is the dyer behind uh, seismic yarn and dye works and i'm so thrilled because i just got a box of your yarn in the shop uh, yesterday, of course, all of this timing ends up being very strange because we pre-record this and then we add it in. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> all good. So tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and your kind of journey to becoming a dyer. Um, so I guess it all started when, sorry, husband's leaving. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of one of those perfect storms of I like nice things, but I'm on a budget, but I can do a lot of stuff. Um, and, and that's also that, I mean, those are kind of the three major components that came together for me. Um, I learned, um, I'm a, I consider myself a newer knitter. I learned uh, when I was pregnant with my, uh, with my daughter, she is um, about to turn seven. Oh my God, she's about to be seven. Um, so I learned when I was pregnant, uh, with her and like everyone, I started off with the acrylic, but then I met, um, I found a, an amazing knitting group that I'm still friends with. And I still see that's how I met Leanne. Um, I think everyone on, on this podcast has to talk about how we, how we know Leanne. Um, but I met her through knitting group and through that knitting group, I was introduced to nicer yarn. And um, I mean, it's some really nice yarn. <laughs> and, Good stuff. <laughs> yarn. I and and I really enjoyed working with it. But like I said, I'm on a budget. But I also have the ability to do stuff. I'm I've always been a DIY person. Um, the we joke that uh, one of my kind of family hobbies is um, kind of reverse engineering fancy recipes and you know and, and kind of like restaurant meals so that we can have you know like restaurant quality food at home and you know things like that and so of course i'm gonna try dyeing yarn because i'm like oh this looks doable so you know i started off with like you know just kind of the inexpensive uh, wools and just kind of you know what whatever's available but what i really love doing was over dyeing and i loved getting the clearance colors from really good companies um companies that would have things say custom milled for them and were known for like their specialty bases. Um, so I loved getting kind of like that discount, good quality yarn base at a discount and then be, and then saying, I can fix that. Cause my answer to a lot of things is things is, Oh, I can fix that. Um, and that's, that's kind of how it got started that I was kind of fixing ugly yarn from other tires but where the base yarn was like incredible and then um i started kind of you know i still love over dyeing um and i you know and kind of over dyeing is is a service i offer but i haven't been doing it so much lately um although there's a really great project i did for leanne of course um that you know that you know just that showed just how much i love over dyeing um but that's, that's really how things got going. Um, and then after that, it was a lot of experimentation 
a lot of support from friends and family who were probably just being nice at the time. Um, I'm convinced that people are always just being nice to me and just humoring me. Um, but then I started getting a little bit of the external validation and people were actually asking to buy said yarn. And then, you know, pop in Leanne again saying, you know, no, you, you, you have to like, you know, have a shop and you have to, you have to do this as a business. And hey, there's a new yarn store opening. It wasn't yours actually, it was Firebird. Yeah. And she's like, you know, and she ended up working there and she's like, bring your yarn. The owner is ordering yarn. And that's, that's when things really got going. And you hosted my first trunk show, uh, you know, when I was just, you know, baby dyer. I still am a baby dyer, maybe toddler. Um, and, and it just, things kind of went from there. And how did you come up with the name? Seismic Yarn, it's an ode to being from California. So I'm born and raised in San Francisco. I live in Daly City now, but born and raised in San Francisco. And, you know, I went through a lot of names before I landed um, on something, but it had to be something that was me, that, you know, that kind of, that fit me. Um, it had to be something that was different from kind of, you know, what was already out there in the yarn world. Um, I do tend to march to the beat of my own drummer. So, you know, that it, again, it had to be different enough, but not weird. <laughs> I, lo I love different brand names and yours is one of my favorites because it's such a... Oh. Thank you. It suggests, you know, shifting and changing and being noticed. I like it. It's a really powerful name. So. Thank you. Do you know what her yeah. tagline is? Oh, okay, yes. Do you know Tell the tagline? Her, Rock your world. That's amazing. Isn't that awesome? It's so good. That is brilliant. That, and that was part of the process. I wanted a good tagline. <laughs> and, you know, there's people that look at me like, oh, okay, that's nice, dear. <laughs> I think it's awesome. to abandon those people from your life. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Because <laughs> I love it. I'm a big dork. I, you know, I enjoy this stuff. And what, that's okay. Because my brand is about me <laughs> and about it's like the silly brand. things yeah. that I find funny. Yeah. That's what you yeah. do. You yeah. are the brand. Yeah. Be the well, brand. I mean, that's, that's really powerful. That was never something that I wanted. Like, mm -hmm. I always, I didn't want to be like the, the face of my own brand or anybody oh. even like know me but it's not an option like, right and so once you kind of figure out hey it's not an option you you are you know you are your brand and mm -hmm. therefore it's like well and you know you might as well just let your personality out there and people are going to love you and people aren't going to love you and just and it's all good. That love you and let the rest go so yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you're from san francisco Yes, born and raised. Mm. Born and I mean, raised. Californian too. It, we're oh. rare. We are. I'm such a unicorn. Like I, sh I should like. You know that there's some some sort of like San Francisco unicorn colorway coming. I just haven't worked it out yet. Yeah. But um, and San Francisco influences a lot of my colorways. I have a whole San Francisco collection that's based on history, insider knowledge, travel tips, like you know, kind of all sorts of that stuff um and yeah it's a big part of who i am um which part of san francisco sorry i'm which sorry part, which part of san francisco did you grow up in i grew up in the castro oh oh my gosh you so, have so to have a san francisco unicorn color like it's oh, absolutely. like and call it that that'd be amazing absolutely but you know and like i said when i do san francisco stuff it's travel tips, insider knowledge, um, inside jokes, th you know, history, things like that. Um, and so a lot of the, so a lot of the San Francisco colorways have stories, mm -hmm. which I, and I love sharing that, especially when I meet people in person at shows or just in the shops. Um, I'm not the greatest storyteller, but I guess I'm good enough <laughs> that, you know, people enjoy it. And then, and then you get to know that, you know, I have a slightly off sense of humor as we all, well, as some of us do. Uh, yeah. My yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, what did you, speaking of your childhood, what did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I was told I wanted to be a doctor. Oh. So, but again, I was told that. Um, my parents work in continuing medical education. They do surgical training and it was a family business. So I grew up um, around that, doing that, around a lot of doc doctors, um, helping my parents in the business. Um, I actually work part-time for my mom still, although things are on hold due to the Rona. But um, I teach microsurgery as my day job. Um, you do? Yes. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, not a surgeon, 
but I know I have all the technical skills. And again, I learned how to do this when I was 10. Um, and so there's a lot of muscle. I love talking to medical people. I can talk to you for hours. <laughs> I think I should have been a doctor, but uh, I'm just so interested in the body. It's just a, an incredible thing. It's a cool thing. And, and like I said, and what I do is very, very specialized. Um, and I, and I like how my parents' business, um, how, how they train people and the environment that's provided. And I, I, I love doing it. Um, I, Tony, I know you're a, you're an elementary school teacher yeah. teaching kids is like the, like, you know, my nightmare. So like this whole homeschooling thing has been rough because <laughs> I do not know how to teach kindergarten math, but I can teach microsurgery <laughs> really well. <laughs> Maybe you can incorporate them. No. <laughs> I, know. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so yeah, so I was told I wanted to be a doctor and I love science and that that's also a big part of of my yarn brand is kind of that intersection of art and science mm -hmm. because I don't consider myself artistic at all. And um, and, you know, people yeah, laugh. Yeah. <laughs> and yet you totally are. I mean, your colors are just magnificent. And your Thank color you. comment, like, it, it surprises me to hear you say that when I consider you to be one of the more artistic dyers in oh, terms of your you. color sensibility. Yeah, it's fabulous. Thank you so much. Um, my, but my approach comes from a, a more scientific, like, I mean, for me, I conceptualize scientifically that, okay, you know, what are things that are pleasing together? What logically goes together? Sometimes I just kind of play. Um, everything I do is very measured. So, um, so I mean, Kelly, you just got your first order of my yarn, but um, like um, the owner of Firebird, Catherine, comments that Thunderstone looks like Thunderstone from batch to batch, from base to base. Like, yes, there's, you know, there's, you know, the individual, individual variations, but I'm, I'm very consistent because things are very measured. And I mean, I, I love lab equipment. I used to work in a, um, in a we industry art lab. Yeah, I, was in. <laughs> I mean, I like my beakers and, you know, my, my, my little, uh, they call it the drug dealer scale because it goes down <laughs> to like, you know, I have the ones that go to the hundredth and even a thousandth of a gram when measuring things out. Yeah, everything is very measured and I have like, you know, lab notes that could be submitted to the FDA <laughs> type of thing. Um, so yeah, so I, so that part of me is very, very scientific. And, and again, that's just kind of how I conceptualize versus when I talk to people that are naturally more artistic and come from the art world, it, you know, they look, they're talking, they talk about, you know, beauty, harmony, balance, things like that. And when they talk about the color wheel, I, honestly I get a little lost I my color theory training is um is uh, has come from Leanne anything I know about color theory has come from Leanne I still confuse all the terms um just because my my brain just you know works differently so it's very strange that I'm in the field that I am but I'm so happy to be here I really yeah. like being here do you have a desert island food a desert island food. So I assume that if I'm stuck on a desert island, um, not by my food. choice, mm. I, 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 I landed there like the people from Lost. Yeah. So I'm eating fish, I'm eating bananas and coconuts and just kind of whatever I can forage. Maybe there's a wild boar I can somehow figure out how to get a piece off of. Um, but I figure I'm eating a lot of fish, so I would ask for soy sauce and wasabi. <laughs> so... So that's why I think we need to rephrase this question. So if you had to eat one food for the rest of your life, <laughs> what food would you choose? I think that's a better way of putting it. Because you just gave the correct answer to that question. You really coconut. That's the first thing I'd look for is coconut and fish. But what is your favorite Can't food? Can't you like sustain yourself off of coconut for like ever or something like that? If you like eat it's less like than five a day, apparently. If oh. you eat more well, than five, you get the is coconut food. water, is, is, you know, it's like the, the late, one of the latest wonder foods of, you know, being super yeah. nutritious. And I remember someone once telling me that people like in, um, in, in uh, certain countries where they don't have great medical supplies, you can inject coconut water um, into your directly into your bloodstream as plasma. I'm not doing that. I don't recommend that anyone do that. Someone just you told do that me with that. bleach as well, apparently. No. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
it's a really bad idea. <laughs> but what is your favorite food? Okay, that's like the hardest question because I love food and I love a lot of foods and I love a variety of foods. Um, so it's really hard. I love cheese. I mean, who doesn't love cheese? Yeah. Um, I like weird food. Like I like pig's feet. My dad makes a killer pig's feet um, paprikash, which is um, a Hungarian food. He's from Hungary. Um, although I wouldn't want to eat that every day. Are they pickled? They can eat Hungary. No, no. Um, it's terrible. Do you hear it's not terrible. what he just said? No, I miss it. Do it again. It was terrible. I said you're making me hungry. <laughs> Are you hungry for some turkey? <laughs> yeah. I'm always hungry. Um, Aren't you guys vegetarian? Yeah. <laughs> We're vegetarians that kind of meat cheat now and again. We, we, <laughs> now and again. It was, yeah. I mean, it used to be like maybe once every three months we mm -hmm. would have something that had like, you know, and we, 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 there were, we always said like when we turned vegetarian, we weren't going to be those types of vegetarian that like, you know, went to somebody's house and if they were serving something, we wouldn't eat yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Or mm -hmm. that if there was like one, like if there, if somebody had made something and there was chicken broth or something, we were like, we're not going to be those vegetarians where we're like, because we're doing it for health purposes uh -huh. and, um, and environmental purposes. And it's, you're very threatening. With I, that. Remember, <laughs> I remember, I <laughs> remember. We can we decided to come very, I made hot dogs at home yeah. and we had the worst indigestion. Yeah. I thought, that's oh. it. That's oh. been vegetarian that day. We went to a restaurant <laughs> in San Francisco called West of Picos. Pecos? West of Picos. West of Picos. Mm -hmm. I remember, we're going to do this like vegetarians. We're gonna yeah. just going to look at the one thing on the menu, which is vegetarian. And I thought it was very depressing. It was a really good thing. Yeah. But I remember it was like, we're just cutting all this great food out of our lives and life's too short to be that picky so <laughs> he's really good at being vegetarian i'm i cheat now and again but well we were like i mean we were fairly disciplined and then covid happened and i was like i'm gonna get like i, I actually i i thought that we were gonna be like hunkered down for a couple of weeks i think most people did so i went grocery shopping and I was like okay I'm gonna buy a couple of weeks worth of food and um I was like I'm getting bratwurst I'm getting Italian sausage like I love it life and like you know I was like we're gonna we're gonna yeah. enjoy ourselves so at home we try we try anyway so, that's, so yeah, that's enough about us <laughs> oh this is my favorite question oh wait before we get to that prime rib I love prime rib Oh, yeah. that's a good I'm a meat eater. I'm a hardcore meat eater. So oh, like on, on a meat cheat day, that's when we're going to get together for a meal, okay? <laughs> okay Prime rib, sounds yeah. good. <laughs> Prime rib at Joe's in Westlake. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Ooh, I haven't had theirs. <laughs> so good. Really that's good. what my mom makes a killer prime rib. So, you know, I we that's cook good. in my family, so. Good. <laughs> I like this question. It is, what is the last piece of music you listen to? I've been listening to a lot of Pink lately. Oh, good. Some I love pink, um, you know, and just, you know, a lot of the rock anthems and stuff, but, um, and I, and she has a lot of hits, but I've really enjoyed hearing the non-hits, kind of just kind of the rest of the albums. So mm -hmm. I have a pink playlist. It has, um, you know, and, and it just has everything. And I really, really enjoy songs that like never made it to the radio, but they are awesome. Could you, it's, if you had to pick one now to put on, what would it be? One pink? Um, I'm kind of in a punchy mood, so she has a song called Revenge with Eminem. That is, it's just fun. Um, yeah. You Make Me Sick is another kind of fun one. That one made it to the radio. Um, Walk Me Home, I think that's actually a more recent one, but I really like it. Um, but yeah, she, she's got just really just intense um, and kind of dramatic music. That I, and, you know, and I can just kind of rock out, and it's fun. Beautiful lady, yeah. Mm. What is, this one's a hard one, I think. Maybe okay. not. I mean, it's a super easy one for me. I always find it really interesting to talk to dyers in particular or even designers and ask, mm -hmm. what is your favorite color? Gray. Wow. I don't like color. Okay, so it's weird. I, um, I, in, I, I've, I like a lot more colors now that I'm a dyer. But before I started knitting and definitely before I started dyeing, my wardrobe is black. It's gray, navy blue. Um, you know, in the spring I might wear like a little bit of brown or tan, you know, but like <laughs> yeah. I, 
I'm very neutral, Some, dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's funny because I like, you know, as a dyer, I like creating color for people who are afraid of color. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, you know, that's a big part of Thunderstone that, you know, I think of it as like kind of my ultimate neutral and it's, it's color, but for people that are afraid of color. And then, um, and then I kind of, you know, started developing more colors that are good for people that are afraid of color, like roasted ube for, for people that aren't big on wearing, uh, you know, a lot of color, but you want just a little something like roasted ube is a great entry color. Army Street, it's a great entry color to have a little bit of color, but it's still, you know, it's still somewhat neutralized. It's still, it's, it's complex. So it's not quite so screaming in your face. Unlike my pretty, pretty princess colors, which are neon, because I have a six-year-old daughter who loves neon, loves neon. I hated pink. Um, for the longest time, the color pink, not the artist pink. Yeah. <laughs> for the longest time, I mean, ever since I can remember, and then I found out I was having a little girl, and I was like, oh God, <laughs> knowing my luck, she's gonna love pink. And yes, she is the, a girly girl, loves all the shades of pink, everything girly. Yeah. And it took me a while, but I finally came around to it. And what's really fun as a dyer is that I'm able to create versions of color that I don't hate. Mm. I, you know, like I said, I didn't care for pink, but I'm creating shades of pink that I'm starting to like. And, you know, creating like magentas that I, I'm starting to like. Even orange and yellow, which are kind of the more controversial colors. I have some oranges I really like. And I mean, I have some yellows I really like. And that's, like to me, that's really cool. It's, it's a way that, you know, dyeing and the yarn world has really, you know, opened me up to more things but come back to but what's my favorite color gray right like a I, nice dark cool gray and uh i'm like your daughter every shade of pink is my favorite and there isn't a color that i, I there isn't a color i don't like i like all the yeah. colors but i do have a tendency to um to, to to be attracted to more neutral earth tone colors mm -hmm. Um, but uh, not that pink's in that category, but pink can be in that category. It can I'm be. So I've got, yeah, I've got a very elegant pink called Cream Rose Pearl. It's kind of a, a um, it starts with like a gray base and it just has a soft pink wash over it. And that has been like one of those like sleeper hits. I didn't expect it to be as popular as it is, but it's, it's done really, really well. Um, cause, cause yeah, it's not, it's not little girl pink. It's, it's an adult pink. And it's very soft, very gentle. I have a new colorway out of my new base, the Stormy. It's already mm -hmm. sold out, and it was an accident. I was trying to, um, I was trying to get like a dark saturated black, and I just couldn't do it with the natural dyes. And I didn't want to use certain ingredients, and mm -hmm. I don't want to like use crush bugs. Like I like to do kitchen, mm -hmm. what I call kitchen brewing, where mm -hmm. I'm taking, you know, ingredients from you know, outside from, you know, various different places. I'm, I, yeah, more plant -based. I'm, I'm foraging. Yeah. I'm okay. foraging for the colors basically. And that's part of the joy of what I'm doing. And then I hand those recipes over to the dye house. So it's not like <laughs> I could run the shop and do all the dyeing myself. It's not, mm -hmm. um, not, not a possibility. Right. On so that note, oh yeah. On that note, can I just say that I, I really want people to know that you're the one that creates the dye recipes. You are the one that creates the colorways. Someone else may, may, may do the production work. Yeah. But that's something that I think is not well enough known about you. Oh, so thanks. can we can we take a second to highlight that thanks. you know you are a yarn shop <laughs> owner, you are a business owner, you are a former publisher, you develop your own yarn line. <laughs> you know, you know, kind of all the technical specifications. And you can't, and you are the one that develops a recipe for, for all the colors. I don't think you get credit for that. I don't think it's something that's well known. So oh, we have nice. to make sure to highlight it. I'm going to make sure to highlight it. When I do my VKL zooms, I try to mention that. Thanks, Ava. That's something that I think needs to be, get out more um, about you. And sometimes, it's, you know, it's hard to promote ourselves. So I'm going to do that for you. <laughs> Guys, Kelly develops the colors herself. Kelly developed the yarn itself, all the technical specifications that, you know, normal, that I leave to other people, although I'm getting interested in it. Um, Kelly does that. Aww. Well, you know, I, I'm going to do a little series at some stage in our kitchen. I thought it would be fun to like, almost like, 
almost like a little cooking show, but with the various <laughs> different Thai recipes. So I thought that would be fun, awesome. be interesting. So I think I'll it was watch. okay that suggested that that. So well, thanks, Ava. Okay, so what is your most annoying habit? So, you know, so I, uh, I saw my best friend the other day and I asked her, I'm like, hey, what, hey you know, what's my most annoying habit? And she's just like, I love you. You don't annoy me. Uh -huh. um, so that's the answer I get from, from my best friend. I, I didn't get a chance to ask my kids, but I'm sure they would give you a laundry list. Mm -hmm. um, if you, my opinion is interrupting. Because I, I get so excited. I get so excited. I like meeting, you know, kind of talking to people and... I get kind of inspired and excited about things they say. And I'm like, oh, me too, me too. And, and I, and I want to share because I enjoy connecting, but then I end up being rude and interrupting a lot. I, I, I understand. I can relate. I to do that. that all the time. Yeah. All the time. And the last question. <gasps> and I know that you have an answer. <laughs> you have a joke. I a do. And, and it has to be kid friendly because I mean, yeah. I got, yeah. but you know. Um, my, uh, got this one from my son. I wish he was here to tell because otherwise I would have had him tell it, but <clears throat> what do we want? Race car noises. When do we want them? Meow. <laughs> that, was really that was really cute. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. my speak joke. I think Credit I to a uh, Riker. Sorry. I think I already did the joke about the cat. How does a cat like its steak? How? I think I've already told you. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure. Wait, I missed the punchline. I'm sorry. It's okay. hard. How do cats like their steak? How? Rare. <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's think, a good one. I think I've told you earlier. <laughs> Ava, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank this has you, been thank a great you. interview. Thank you. Thank you. That's thank you for having me. Stuff. She is. She's got She's no annoying habits. No, no annoying habits. Oh, I'm totally annoying. I'm a, I'm a pain to live with, but, you know, my husband tolerates. Oh, my God. He is a saint. He tolerates me. Um, I, ha I really do have a lot of annoying habits. It's just the interrupting one is, the, is probably going to be the worst. Okay. Well, thank you. Well, we Eva. love you. It's nice thank to see you. you. Thank you so much for having me. And, Tony, can we meet? I hope we meet in person someday. Yeah, one day when this is all over. We'll have a meat <laughs> cheat meal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, Ava. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. Be well. Bye. Wow, that was it's good. Bye. Bye, Ava. Bye. Bye. There she goes. There she goes. Bye, Ava. Do you think they believed us? Yes. <laughs> okay. That was a great interview. I really enjoyed that interview. She's adorable, isn't she? Nice. Yeah, nice person. Nice person. So, yeah. Person. Good people. Good people. Everybody that we have is good. Yes, everyone we interview is good people. Oh, and I'm and next week. Oh my gosh. So we try to do it. We we're, were trying to get into this rhythm, and honestly, every time I say that we're going to do something, we end up not doing it. So I shouldn't even say. Story but... of our marriage. <laughs> um, <but yeah. laughs> <laughs> Should we cut that? Yeah, we cut no, that? just whatever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I um. Your mum watches this, doesn't yeah, she? she? <laughs> and your mom too. Yeah, she. <laughs> Our biggest fans. My mum still thinks we sleep oh. in separate beds. That's oh. great. Anyway, um. Yeah. So um. So I was what I was trying to do was like showcase the maker, whether it be a dyer, a designer, etc the week before and then have the interview yeah but we just got out of this rhythm anyway but we'll try to get back to yeah. it but let me just say that i totally am a fangirl of stephanie wilkes who don't say too much okay of, well but. just she's a lady sheep shearer she's written um a book called raw material which is phenomenal i've and never seen kelly not put a book down yeah I, that's that's really true, and I'm I'm finding it very. I haven't finished it yet, but um, you got it's it. Really, arrived in the mail, and you just yeah, sat I just there and read started it. to devour it because it's so that. up my street. I mean, I know, we'll talk about that next week. Though. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people 
won't be but that that's, into that'll it, be but next I'm completely freaking um, out on it. Stephanie. Anyway. Yeah. Talk so, about this, Cal. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I like to um, share some of the stuff that I have in the shop. Mm -hmm. And I recently got a new batch of Nerd Bird Makery. Yeah. You. And actually, um, Nerd Bird Makery is making a custom pin for me. Same. So that's going to be... Um, available really soon. Cool pins, there's some yarn yeah. that looks like new. Sorry about the shine. I'm so thrilled that um, this one says that we're working together. Knit lit. So cute. This one. Nevertheless she knitted. Oh good. Sorry about the glare. There you go. I'll be good. Super cute. Two more. I'll do. Okay. Right. I mean I have you others keep but I just thought that we would showcase some of these adorable pins because it's really fun to put these, it's too. What's wrong with them? Unicorns are just unicorns. so popular at the moment, oh my goodness. Who doesn't love a good unicorn? And then I've got her totes, follow your bliss. And I'm getting a few um, additional totes in shortly too. So um, her stuff is just really great. And it's, like I said, she's designing custom pin for me and I couldn't be more thrilled. She's very, very talented and it's just fun to put these little pins on your project bag or um, hmm. on a hat, that type of thing. I tend to put the them lapel. all over my, yeah, you could do your lapel. I tend to put them on my project bags. Yeah. So I think many of us do and they're just fun to collect. I don't put cute. pins on my clothes because I always accidentally wash them and yeah. they destroy yeah. everything. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that. Yeah. Are we done? I think we're done. Can we go and eat something now? What do you want? A dinosaur sandwich? No, no. Really? Oh, um, well, um, not that I don't want a dinosaur sandwich, no, but it's dinner time. Come. That's a lunch thing. <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat sandwiches for dinner. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't think we've had one this week. Yeah, we did actually on Friday. <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> two days ago. Yeah. Uh, so good but anyway that's the end of our show we hope you enjoyed it and we'll be back next week with yeah. we'll meet a real life author and sheep shearer what she says about sheep shearing is really interesting she is just interesting in general Some things i never dreamt of thinking about but anyway really yeah. as a welshman yeah <laughs> from the land of sheep yes the land of sheep as you say yeah anyway have a great week Bye. be safe Wash Bye. your hands. Be safe. Don't Be touch well. your face. Bye. Don't touch. My new glasses. <laughs>